Question number one. Question number one to Deputy Leader, I guess. I thank uh, Councillor Osborne for his, uh, his question. Um, well, uh, how, uh, how things change. Um, Formula E is something that uh, uh, his party supported uh, when we last considered the matter uh, as a council. Uh, and um, post the races, they seem to be perfectly happy. Indeed, uh, on the 11th of November, uh, we were at uh, a report back meeting in my own ward, Shaftesbury. Uh, I spoke on Formula E and was immediately followed by Councillor Osborne, who uh, gave what I thought was a very elegant uh, performance of uh, perching on a fence. But everybody who I spoke to afterwards had the same interpretation that I had, that he was going to hop off that fence uh, in support of Formula E. Such was the tone of his comments. Uh, so I detect in this question um, some desperation. Um, selective quotation, uh, mistakes, inaccuracies, I'm being gentle and kind here, um, as he tries to shore up uh, a very difficult position. And I think, uh, I think we have a clue to that position that he's in uh, because of the, uh, the eloquent performance that uh, Councillor Speck, uh, and I suspect there are others on their side who, uh, who uh, share the view uh, at uh, OSC when she uh, gave a very, uh, very full explanation of why she felt that it was far from being all bad. Um, to move to the, uh, the question here, um, unfortunately, I really do, as, as the answer says, I do feel that uh, Councillor Osborne has uh, confused two things, and anyone reading this uh, will be confused by it. Um, the heritage impact assessment uh, was very uh, clear in what it said. Uh, it was produced by an independent consultant. Important to note that. And as it says here, I would particularly stress the following, and I will read it in full. I make no apology for doing so. Um, this comment was not the view of the Heritage Lottery Fund, HLF, as Councillor Osborne states, nor was it concerning the park's heritage infrastructure. They are matters of fact. B, this consultant's comment was in the context of the consultant's view that the additional closure of the park might be preferable. Uh, that is a suggestion that we strongly disagree with. And anyone who had read uh, paper 15, 445, uh, would have detected that uh, and wouldn't have wasted our time with an inaccurate question. Um, contrary to Councillor Osborne's belief, the HLF concluded uh, very clearly after a visit to the park on uh, the 29th of July um, that the heritage core of the park appeared to have been unaffected by the racing. Uh, they made no for further formal comment and it's therefore incorrect for Councillor Osborne to say that the HLF reported that the race was not appropriate for the park. They did no such thing. In respect of health and safety, again, I'll read in full uh, what the passage is quoted here. Uh, I make no apology for doing so because it's very, very important that this matter is clear. Finally, it is a purpose, and this is our own safety, uh, uh, safety consultant appointed by us, but independent. Finally, it is the purpose of this report to highlight issues identified with the planning and implementation of the event, along with areas for improvement. In doing so, it can often portray an illusion of an event besieged with problems as we seldom focus on the positives. Let us, and this was written before anyone could have seen the Labour Party's question. Let us not lose sight of the fact that the event was delivered with, so far as we're aware, no major incidents uh, or, or injuries. Uh, go on to uh, continue to answer Councillor Osborne's question here, um, alleging inadequate consultation. Uh, and there's a lot of detail here. Suffice to say that we had a very well attended public meeting. Uh, there were lots of announcements, there were posters in the park. The Friends of Battersea Park uh, had a full article in autumn of last year. It was hardly a secret. Um, the, uh, the statement that 62% of local residents were opposed to F Formula E is plain wrong because it is based on a survey which had 847 people of that view. Now, uh, it doesn't take a mathematical genius to, to work out that as a percentage of the borough's population, I actually make it slightly higher than the figure quoted here, um, is really very, very tiny, 0.27% um, of a percent. So, I mean, that might come as a nasty surprise to this, the, the Labour Party, but their whole premise of this question uh, is, is unsound. Um, so, to conclude, in what I realise is a rather lengthy answer, but I think these things need to be clearly understood, um, we face unprecedented challenges and there are many, many positives, as our consultant here pointed out, one of which is this has been very financially beneficial to the council at a very, very difficult time. And this question is a torrent of negativity. There is not a single positive comment in it. And I challenge uh, Councillor Osborne to reflect on that. Um, Councillor Osborne. Thank you.
Uh, well, uh, I'm grateful from, for the clarification from the uh, Deputy Leader of the Council, and I say that with uh, uh, my usual good grace. I hope the good grace for which I am recognised on both sides of the Chamber. Uh, pity it's not always reciprocated, but there we go. Uh, and move on to my question, which is, um, does the Deputy Leader of the Council agree with me that it is extremely convenient for the administration at this council, that the finances, the uh, substantial income to both council and park, which the deputy leader refers to in his answer, are the subject of uh, commercial uh, confidentiality and therefore cannot be revealed. Uh, because if they were revealed, people would note that given how wealthy Formula E is and the amount of money they have to disperse, they know what a poor deal this council has got from Formula E and what a paltry sum they're getting. Uh, well, I, uh, I thank, I thank uh, Councillor Osborne uh, for his supplementary question. Um, I don't think it's a matter of convenience. It's a matter of commercial fact. Uh, we went through at OSC in some detail uh, why uh, it, the contract stipulates that it should be uh, confidential. It's not unusual. It makes perfect sense. Um, Regarding uh, whether or not it's a good deal, um, well, uh, people can make their own mind up on that. Uh, all the, all the, all the uh, we have put into the public domain that this is worth uh, £200,000 a year to the park itself. Um, members are aware of the nature of the deal. And I think it's perfectly safe for me to say in public uh, that we are the only one of the global venues, so far as I'm aware, and obviously I can't be completely sure, how, how can I know what the details of the arrangements in Beijing or Malaysia or Uruguay or wherever uh, actually are, uh, but as far as I'm aware, we are the only one of the venues who's actually getting any payment. And so I would suggest that actually we've got a rather good deal. Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Heaster. Uh, I think the deputy leader for the response he's given, and I know there's eight paragraphs here, and uh, seven are rebuffing what the leader of the opposition has said, but on the last paragraph, which are the actual benefits uh, that this scheme has, uh, I know for a fact that a number of local um, shopkeepers benefited from this. I know the Chamber of Commerce were very supportive of it, and I noticed that there's a huge amount of publicity which has benefited the borough as a whole, and I'm sure will act as a stimulus to, uh, for in encouraging bit small business, in particular in the borough. Can you say more about the, the positive things about this? I thank uh, Councillor Heaster for, for that question. Yes, with, with great pleasure, because I cannot emphasise enough uh, that I think the negativity has... has got things completely the wrong way around. There is much that's positive. Uh, where to start? Well, 60,000 people showed up and enjoyed the, uh, the occasion. Uh, near sellout. First, first time it's ever been run. Uh, I think that's something we should be very, very proud of. Uh, involvement of young people is very striking. I've never been to Formula One myself, but I'm told that it's unusual to see uh, young children at a Formula One race. There were loads of young children and families at the Formula E races. And of course, it's that message about electric cars and them being an important part of the future, a credible part of the future, which we're trying to get across. So having young people there is incredibly important. I was delighted to see the involvement of schools. I thought that was terrific. Bolingbrook Academy, still buzzing from it. I mean, absolutely tremendous. Um, fantastic profile. Uh, overwhelmingly positive. TV coverage to die for. You can't pay for that sort of coverage, uh, not just in this country, globally. Uh, the name of Batsy and Batsy Park, and it looked tremendous. I know some people were irritated by the helicopter. It was noisy, but the shots were fantastic, and I think anyone who saw that would have been very, very proud that that was our park on TV screens right the way around the world. There were loads and loads of things that were positive about it. I don't say that there were no negatives. Of course there were, but there was an awful lot that we should be proud of. Thank you very much. Question two, Councillor Osborne. Question number two, I take it in each case because the leader isn't here, it's always the deputy leader who covers. Uh, we've had no guidance on it, but question number two to the deputy leader. Thank uh, I thank Councillor Osborne for the question. I can confirm that the, uh, the leader is in India at a family wedding, um, so I'm sure we'll send him our, our best wishes. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to slightly repeat myself with the answer to uh, uh, this question about uh, investing solutions and this uh, so-called expose. Uh, there isn't really anything to expose. Um, uh, it's, uh, really, uh, I mean, if the opposition had taken the trouble to establish the facts 
which they could easily have done around uh, the mechanisms of private renting, the payment of housing benefit, and how that relates to the operation of the private rental sector, which, of course, as we have just heard, is a very, very important part of the, econo the uh, accommodation economy of this borough. If the party opposite had taken some time to ask officers, try to understand the situation before going to the BBC, they could have saved themselves and everybody else an awful lot of bother. Uh, to answer the questions here, because there really isn't any mystery to it, uh, I mean, it is all laid out. Uh, our officers are very thorough, very professional, and they are aware, and have been for many years, of investing solutions. Uh, each and every one of uh, their claims um, are compliant with the regulations. Uh, they operate entirely within the law. Um, there is contact with the owner, uh, Mr. Mattel, Mr. Patel. Uh, there have been some issues. They've all been resolved. We'll come on to that in the next question. Um, and uh, I, I really, I mean, I'm bemused by the question. I've got two, two further comments to make. I mean, I, I'm sure that Councillor Osborne will wish to agree with me that uh, the private rental sector is an important part of the, the borough's uh, accommodation scene uh, and that, uh, and that uh, the vast majority of it is very, very well run. I'm sure his colleagues who are, are landlords will, uh, will agree with me on that. I would, other I would like to make another sort of very serious point and I would invite him to apologise to officers. I was very saddened to see the Labour website, uh, the Wandsworth Labour website, um, <coughs> accusing our officers of being flat-footed. Uh, not a bit of it. Uh, they were not aware of any of this before uh, the Labour Party contacted the BBC, which I think is uh, really quite shameful. And to accuse our officers of being flat-footed is totally inappropriate. It's, it's verging on being a standards issue. Uh, and, and, uh, and I think if anyone's been flat-footed here, it's the Labour Party. Supplementary, Madam Mayor? Yes. Supplementary, Madam Mayor. Um, will the Deputy Leader agree with uh, a member of staff of investing solutions who uh, was willing to go on the record and say that uh, out of the because out of the seven boroughs in which investing solution operates uh, the borough by far which pays investing solutions the uh, housing benefit for the tenants uh, the, to the greatest degree uh, around about half of that of the total out of the seven um, uh, that, that, that is the case because uh, the uh, complacent and flat-footed administration at this council, um, uh, as that member of staff called them, a soft touch. Uh, I, I have to say thank you for that supplementary question, but I, I'm not particularly pleased by it. Uh, well, it's just, uh, as, as with the first part of the question, it's just wrong. Uh, this is to do with national legislation and national regulation. It's not something that boroughs have discretion over. And the councillor may, uh, may, may be interested to note that much of the relevant regulation uh, pertaining to individuals, individuals in this housing, uh, and a lot of it does tend to be older single men who are difficult to find accommodation for and to whom the council has, has no particular duty, a lot of the legislation was put in, put in place by the Brown government. Um, this this administration, this council, is doing nothing more nor nothing less than implementing the law. And the investing solutions operating is also operating within the law, as far as we can see. And we have looked at it very carefully. Councillor Salier. Thank you. Um, I thank the Cabinet Member for his um, comments about the staff in the Housing Department. And particularly, I would, I would like to offer him the opportunity just to thank them for their hard work and service, in particular our environmental health team and our private sector housing team, who have been so heavily criticised wrongfully by the Labour Party in this case. Uh, I thank Councillor Sally for that, that question. Very pertinent it is too. I, I do feel very strongly that uh, it's completely inappropriate to criticise our officers, particularly uh, those who do very difficult job such as this. Uh, it really is uh, very physically unpleasant sometimes uh, and, uh, and uh, they do a very, very, very good job. And it is quite wrong, it is quite wrong, it is quite wrong, it is quite wrong to criticise officers on the Labour Party's Wandsworth website. Quite wrong. And I invite, the, uh, I invite Councillor Osborne to apologise. We have question three please, Councillor Lescott. Yes, question three to the Deputy Leader please. Exciting or dull, Councillor Belton? Councillor Lescott. 
That's question three to the Deputy Leader, please. Uh, I thank Councillor Lescott for this uh, question on the same subject. Uh, I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll be a little bit more succinct. Um, the, the answers are, are laid out here. They're a matter of, uh, a matter of fact. Um, and uh, and uh, I suspect they're, um, they're not what the Labour Party would want to hear. Um, I can add an update to D. Um, one complaint was received on the 27th of November 20, 2015. This is currently being investigated by officers. I can now report that as of this afternoon, uh, this has been satisfactorily resolved. And guess what? It wasn't quite as described, which seems to be a bit of a theme here. Supplementary. Supplementary. Councillor Scott. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you for that answer. Uh, can you also confirm that all payments of housing benefit have been made in accordance with the law? And uh, has the uh, Deputy Leader any advice for the best way for councillors to help constituencies when issues with housing arise? Uh, I thank Councillor Escott for that supplementary question. Well, um, yes, uh, yes, of course. Uh, as, as I said, uh, everything has been done uh, according to regulations. We've been very, very careful about that. Our offices are very thorough. Uh, this council has a reputation for efficiency, and uh, of course, we've looked at that, and uh, it is all as it should be. Um, the, um, the point as to how councillors should uh, can best help their constituents, of course, it's to go to the relevant. Uh, department of the council. I'm sure the housing department in this case would be, or Mr. Buss's department, finance, uh, would be only too pleased to help. Um, generally, I would have thought approaching the BBC is a fairly inefficient way of dealing with a, a ward query. Second supplementary. Yes. Um, perhaps the deputy leader is forgetting that I first complained about a specific address at the housing department on April the 1st, citing my concerns regarding, and I quote, the money the tenant had paid out to make his accommodation habitable, that I then visited the housing department in person to discuss my concerns that same month, perhaps you're forgetting these details, that I requested the housing department to provide me with the addresses of all the properties managed by Investing Solutions on June the 2nd, a request that I had to chase... Is but there to a question, Councillor Jones? Yes, the question is perhaps, um, as is he forgetting the following? Is he also forgetting that I called the Housing Department before the BBC programme aired? And is he suggesting that the solution today found for the three people, including a four-week-old baby, living in, a one, in one room without adequate heating is satisfactory? I thank the Councillor for the supplementary question. Uh, I don't want to get too uh, drawn into individual cases for, uh, uh, for reasons that members will understand, but from what I know of uh, the most, from what I, uh, from what I know of the most recent case, uh, all, of the, uh, all of the difficulties, including the one mentioned, have been resolved, and they were very easy, I am assured, uh, to, uh, to resolve. Uh, regarding the, uh, the other matters, it's not what I've been advised, is all I can say. Question for Councillor Anderson. Councillor Anderson. Question to the Deputy Leader. I thank Councillor Anderson for this, uh, this question. Im important subject. Um, the answer here, I think, lays out uh, very clearly what we're doing. Uh, we're, we're doing everything we can. We're talking to uh, GLA, DCL, DCLG. Uh, the Leader has very recently written to the Deputy Mayor. Um, confirming that we stand absolutely ready to do, uh, to do uh, all, all that we can. And I think the main theme here is that, uh, and as the, an as the answer lays out, um, the government is rightly laying down conditions and wants to be sure that uh, local authorities uh, are adequately prepared because if we accept a family, particularly with young children, uh, everybody needs to be sure that uh, all possible support is in place, not just now, but for the long term. Uh, and one thinks particularly of uh, education and children. Um, so uh, so we, uh, we're being very careful to make sure that uh, we're doing everything we can, getting everything in place and planned properly, uh, and then in due course uh, um, accepting, uh, accepting refugees. Councillor Anderson. Supplementary, thank you. Thank you for this update on uh, the, the situation. And this is new news. That it's very welcome that the government has now been how, um, set out its package and asked um, what councils can deliver. When will we hear how many people can be welcomed um, and as councillors can be ready? Um, and is it likely to be more than 10 families? 
Well, our, our position on, uh, I think I think I can answer the supplementary question. Our position on numbers uh, is as uh, as we recently debated and, and agreed. Um, exact timescales uh, I don't have right now, but uh, I can assure the councillor that uh, we are uh, very active, um, more active than most, most London boroughs in staying in close contact with central government uh, uh, and on, on this issue, so she shouldn't be concerned on that front. That's the... Yes, Councillor Tracy. Um, uh, I would just like to um, uh, ask uh, the uh, Deputy Leader, because I'm sure he's not aware of the fact that um, we already have, and some of us were lucky enough to visit Southfield School a couple of days ago, we already have a program in education for refugees where um, the, um, all refugees that arrive in the borough will attend Southfield School where they are not taught in chronological age but in the, the development of English. Um, it is a highly successful program. It is one of our real gems. Um, and I just wanted to make uh, uh, the Deputy Leader aware of it and also uh, Councillor Anson. I just want to know if he did know about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I thank Councillor Tracy for, for that contribution. I wasn't aware. Uh, it just underlines uh, uh, really everything I was saying about the importance of doing these things properly, which, of course, we will do. That is the end of uh, questions to the leader.